But right now it's time for a segment that you won't find in any periodical next to a breakfast, breakfast buffet in your local Marriott. Uh, last night while talking to professional gamblers about diamond rings, a select group of statisticians, former rivals, and people who don't text with Michael Jordan fought and toiled and burned the midnight oil to deliver the best segment in all of basketball television. It's an honor and a privilege. It's time for Nick's Tears. See, Wilds, th th this is why I can't have private conversations with you. They, they, they make it onto they the show far could just, too But often. if you just were stone-faced, <laughs> yeah, well, it'd just be like, oh, Wilds, The audience silly. is on to it. All right, you guys know how it works. Much like NFL Tears, we have a committee. But different than NFL Tears, we have different levels to being off the tiers, different levels of relegation. So let's show you who is off the tiers. Regular relegation, sub-relegation, and then contraction, meaning those two teams should <laughs> cease to exist at least for the rest of the year. In fact, I think they should play a best of seven at the end of the year. The winner of it gets the number one pick. The other team doesn't get a draft pick. How about that? Take that. Take your medicine there. Wow. Washington, Detroit. All right. Bottom of the tiers, unrelegated Chicago and Houston. Yes. Shout out to them. Still relevant. Houston crew, turns out all it took was them to get Shingun out of line, and now they <laughs> going can't on. It's something strange. The you Bulls, gotta admit. firing them. This it is, is a respect to DeMar DeRozan, who's having an underrated, really solid season. And then there's Indy, which is in a weird spot, if you ask me. 14 and 14 in the last 28. And so they, they've just been fine yeah. ever since it was like, oh, how dangerous they are. A lot of that's due, I think, with Halliburton not being 100%. All right, next. Deserve more respect. I can already see it. These are going to be the teams that at the end of the year, shows like ours, people are going to be looking at the standings and be like, actually, if I'm Oklahoma City, I want to lose tonight. Oh, so yeah. I'm lined up with the Kings in round one versus potentially the winner mm. of the play-in. So mm. these two teams, particularly New Orleans, deserves to be discussed in a higher regard, but the committee and the national media doesn't take them seriously as even second-round playoff contenders. Mm. Next, party crashers. In the Eastern Conference, everyone wants to see Boston-Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals. People are prepared for Miami or maybe Philly to spoil that to a degree. Nobody is prepared for one of these three mm. teams to. But they're three, four, five right now in the East. Orlando <laughs> won't go away. New York's doing it despite the injuries. Cleveland's doing it despite Donovan, you know, being in and out of the lineup and being injured. So they are trying to crash the round two and maybe even round three party. Mm. History matters. I know in sports commentary and politics it seems not to, but I promise it does. The Sixers and Clippers, they, they're going to be, if Embiid comes back, and already with the Clippers, I can see the twinkle and bruise eye. People are going to want to believe in me. But when I say history matters, <laughs> I mean the recent history of James Harden in the playoffs, yeah. of the Sixers his with him in the playoffs, or the longer-term history of, I don't know, just pull a number out of the air. The last 40 years, these two franchises have played in two combined conference finals in the last 40 years. They're... It, their rivals, by the way, the Lakers and the Celtics, have played in 27. Mm. And so it, it, the idea that either one of these teams is going to go on a deep playoff run, history says they won't. Next, <clears throat> scarier than their record. Listen, relax, hipster NBA fans. I get it. Why do you spend so much time talking about these? Luka, LeBron, Durant, Steph. That's why. The reason why these four play-in teams that right now actually best two will even actually make the real postseason they get so much discussion is because they have four of the 10 best players in the league all of them except for this uh warriors have an awesome second option to go along with those guys and they honest to god just seem scarier in a playoff series than every team beneath them mm -hmm. despite the fact that literally at least half of them will not even make the actual postseason if the current bracket holds next the committee can't quit them. Listen, I get the skepticism. Yeah. I understand there is not a lot of hard data from this season to point to. What I will tell you is this. This Miami Heat team is on pace for 44 wins, which is, ah. Uh, yeah. When they made the finals in 2020, you know how many games they won? 44. When they made the finals last year, you know how many games they won? 
44. This heat, maybe 44 is a special number for Syracuse football and for the Miami Heat. I don't know. But I know when you have playoff Jimmy, when you have Eric Spolstra, the committee's going to believe in you. Trying to skip steps. And this is not a knock on them. It's just reality. Oklahoma yeah, City and Minnesota sure. are both trying to skip what has been the traditional progression of all these young teams throughout NBA history, which is you finally have the great regular season and you get knocked out early in the playoffs and the next year you're a real contender. Oklahoma City and Minnesota are saying, no, we're real contenders right now. We're going to comp compact the timeline here. They both have a superstar young North American player. I'm claiming Shea. Canada, that, that, you're an American player. Let's be honest here. He's not a European player. He's one of ours. <laughs> hey, Anthony Edwards, they have, they have a, a kind of a smartly built team, one through seven for both of them. They just don't have the experience. King of the Hill. If this is our NBA Finals, Adam Silver might as well hang the best player alive championship belt above the middle of the court. Because it, there is, it, I understand everyone says it's Jokic and it's not it just through every is. time the champion, the best player in the champion, but if it's two guys that both have two MVPs, both have one finals yeah, MVP, and then they play and they're around the same age, they play each other in the finals, and that we think the teams are pretty evenly matched, that would seem fair. And then at the top of the tiers, now or never, feels a little Ravensy. Wow. Top. Which is, yeah, I think they were the top of the tiers last time as well. Which the the Boston Celtics, if they can't break through this season with this point differential and this record and this health and this starting lineup, there there will be even more growing questions about whether or not if your top two is Tatum and Brown, you are built for a championship. We know you're built for deep postseason runs. We know you're built for great regular seasons. So I do feel like it's a bit now or never for the Boston Celtics. Brew? Well done for the most part. Um, but I'm going to the heat. The heat are too high. All right? I think I got a, yeah. a crafty. Yeah. The heat are cold as ice. I get it. Thanks, All right? Bro. You I get, get that? It. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Little play on words. <laughs> All right. Um, and Nick, I get heat culture. I get playoff Jimmy yeah. Eric Spolster, obviously a great coach, but I'm I am so glad I beat the buzzer on the Heat. Last last week we made our picks this guy. and I beat the buzzer. What you mean? I when checked you with Celtics Hubs. Heat? At first I had Celtics beating the Heat in the conference finals. I checked with Hubs and Keta. I was like, eh, I'm feeling funny about the Heat. I want to change it to the Bucks. They said just in time, bro, oh, you can change it. So I got the Bucks getting beat by the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. I I'm off the heat, Nick. They lost seven. I get it. The 44 games, yes. They're the AC. They were the AC last year when they went to the finals. All right. They they've lost seven straight games though in January. Not a good look. They've lost five of their last seven. Not a good look. Oh, and they're 14 and 22 against winning teams this season. Take a look at this. Uh oh. The, look at that closely. The years they've gotten deep into the playoffs, they played well against winning teams. Even last year, they were 500 against winning teams. Go to the finals. Then 28 and 22 oh, the year, the year before the that. First round the before one that. year they were 14 and 22 as they are now, they lost in the first round. So I, like I think that says something. Max, I get it. They got Terry Rozier, who I like a lot, but Max Struess was a big part of that run. He's gone. Gabe Vincent. I know he's not great for the Lakers, but it was a big part Can't of that play. run. He is gone. All right. And so yep. they I, I think the heat are too high. Uh, so I would actually I, put them below. If I can see the tears again quickly. Yeah, I would put them below Philadelphia or below the party. I would crashers. put them with the uh, with the uh, party crash. Yeah, so yeah, because that's Philadelphia. what they are, like the I, Knicks. No, I understand. So, so here's the, my problem with that. If we can just show and I've shown you this graph before, I'll show it to you again. The best three teams in the East the last five years. The Heat have always been the worst regular season team and have been the most consistent postseason team. And so it's just very hard when they have the same. It's not like the core has changed significantly. It's still Spo, Jimmy, and Bam. It's hard for me to panic too much. Again, Lowry I was said, a big part, too. Last year, Lowry, not so much. Lowry he, he was not play. very he good was, last year. But he's, he's right. He's got the medal. He's okay. part of those. Well, I like the Sixers, by the way. All right, uh, all right, I just want to dig in on the Celtics. Obviously, I still think the Nuggets should be ahead of them, even though they did. Yeah. Well, they won, but they did take a loss against on a miracle shot. So three stats on the Celtics first this season. Uh, turns out they're just absolutely excellent. First offensive rating rebounds their first 
uh, three-point percentage they're second, and their defense rating second while they're holding uh, their opponents to only 35% shooting from three. And now this is a little glass half full, glass half empty. You want to be a pessimist, like some people on the staff, let's say. You'll say, you know what? Tatum has kind of fallen off. Well, why don't you just be glass half full? And like, you know what? Jalen Brown's playing great. He's elevated his game post-All-Star. Maybe Tatum has taken a step back. And those numbers are still pretty good. They're still right, excellent, right, but right. they're not kind of MVP-ish, which he wanted to gun for. Um, so I wanted to bring in LeBron in his podcast with JJ, talked about Tatum and maybe his inexperience slash criticism. Take a listen. Not a good point, Kobe, without Shea. He already had <laughs> three. Yeah, but he, he had to do it. He wanted well, to what prove he could win it without Shea. He won when he was 21. Go ahead, Will. Do it in any event. Uh, quick correction. We don't know exactly when that pod was taped, but Tatum just turned 26. Yeah. One correction about LeBron. He was not 28. He was actually 27. LeBron Jordan always selling himself short, man. <laughs> he's just like Jordan he said, was he's 27. You yeah. sure Steph was 27? I thought he was 26. He's uh, well. <laughs> take it up, take to Josh. That up with Josh, Josh. Are you sure? Uh, I apologize. Check, that. Yeah. check it. He's Josh. Check it. And <laughs> the, I think Giannis was 26. I think he's right that Steph was 27. But we can check. But go ahead. We don't need to check. Go ahead. It's Ron. been checked yeah. and it's on the graphic. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I got you, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> so the question, Drew, do you buy that? Tatum might be too young to win. I, I, I think what LeBron said is right on the money. I agree with that. Like, we, you saw that. The legends are 27 and 28 years old, 26 with Giannis, before they win a championship. The, the guys that won it younger, Kobe, Kareem, Magic, yeah. they had superstars around them when they went there. Bird. They had Hall of Fame players. Who did? Well, no, I just I, Kareem was the driving force. But he, he had Oscar Robertson. Yes, yeah, I mean, older yeah, Oscar. yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah but yeah. he was still re really good. Yeah. And so, and half the best players in the world were in the ABA sure. when Kareem yeah. won it. So I, I think this is right on the money. He's in. This is check this out. In his six years in the league, this is his seventh. He has been to the conference finals, as LeBron said, four times. And people jump on him. I'm not saying he's as good as LeBron, but people jump on him because of how he played in those finals. Let's look at how he played in the finals, though, compared to LeBron. His numbers, this is LeBron's first two finals. And Tatum's numbers are right there with LeBron, arguably better. LeBron's first finals against San Antonio, he shot 35% from the field, and he averaged five and a half turnovers a game. All right, so we know LeBron's first two finals, he was bad. All right, or, you know, far below his ability. And so I'm not saying Tatum's in that class, but this is this is par for the course, though, because Jordan, as much as everybody loves him now, and they loved him then, but he still did get criticized until he won. Oh, he can put up numbers. He can sell shoes. He's not Magic or Larry, though, because he doesn't win. Um, LeBron obviously got criticized. Jokic got criticized. Like, Every this is this is what happens when we put you on a certain level until you win you get criticized and it's like the old school coaches that said when I stop yelling at you that's when you should worry when I'm yelling at you it means I believe in you when we're criticizing you Jason it means we believe you're capable of winning it right. worry when we stop criticizing you and say oh he's got to win a ring oh he's got to win a ring because mm. then we don't think you're capable that's I why like that. I don't criticize Tatum that much <laughs> oh you just don't believe in him? He's not he's I, never gonna win a ring? I, I, as the number I think one it's guy. Hard, I think it's gonna be hard to win a ring with him as your best player. Okay. I think he's the sixth or seventh best player in the league. I think that's hard. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.